Hey guys, welcome back. Today's a plant tour video. I have so much to do. Yesterday I filmed a plant tour video and I was looking around and I was like, oh my gosh, there's actually so much I need to do. So I'm really excited. We're gonna start off with my anthurium seedlings. So if y'all missed it guys, I got the cutest anthuriums from North Shore Tropicals. I really need to transfer them because like I can't do anthuriums in moss guys. So we're gonna do pawn. I am so nervous like unbelievably nervous. It's probably, I'm gonna break them. <laughs> I didn't even start yet. I am so nervous. You don't even know. Like, oh my God, it's like it's too fragile. I'm gonna have to put this in like, what are those things called? Like the um, prop boxes. Oh my God, wow, that took so long. Yeah, I'm nervous guys. I know like I've transferred like all my anthuriums into pollen, but they were never this young. I'm gonna try to be extra careful. I'm gonna hope there's a big root system or some adventitious roots that are ready to root in the pond. Okay guys, the last time I had a juvenile um, anthurium was when I propagated my anthurium crystallinum crossed with magnificum and she kind of melted away because I kind of put her through shock and I'm hoping it's not the same <laughs> with these. Okay, let's start off with the crystallinum magnificum hybrid crossed with luxurian. So again, look how beautiful. So she's in moss. It's hard when like these anthuriums are so small. Oh, oh. And I love, oh my gosh, the roots look good. They're like so cute. Oh, look, I cannot, I cannot. I could see like maybe four, three main roots and then like some branching. So that's like wonderful. Okay, we're gonna use these three inch translucent pots. Got my pond here. Oh my God, you're gonna be so cute. You're gonna be so cute. Whoa. Oh my gosh, guys, this is so cute. Okay, let's remember to keep the tag so we don't forget. Wow, I am so excited. This is so wonderful. Look at her, she's so cute. Okay, let's do the second one that is in moss. So this is the Anthurium Magnificum crossed with Luxuriums. Oh my gosh, she's a little, oh, actually, oh my God, these, honestly, the Luxuriums in these plants, yeah, here's the thing with me and sphagnum moss. If I have a plant that's growing in sphagnum moss, I will ignore you. It's like a guarantee that I will ignore you. <laughs> and it's honestly the same with plants that are in an aerate mix. I think the only one that I'd keep an eye out on are my philodendron strawberry shake propagations just because, you know, I'm planning to sell them. But I mean, having a plant in pawn or LECA, it just kind of guarantees that I'm going to be checking it. I think I broke a root. I feel the most comfortable taking moss off a plant's roots when it's slightly moist to wet. If your moss is completely dry, first of all, your plant is probably like super dehydrated. So I don't recommend you transferring it and putting the plant in any additional shock. So I'm at a point where there's just like a couple strands of spag that's left. I'm gonna just wet that area. I'm just gonna see if it makes it easier. Yeah, so easy now. Just at the top, there was a bunch of dry spag, so that is perfect. I'm just trying my best to take the spag off of the roots, um, but I think that's okay. We got a few. There are some adventitious roots for you to zoom in that haven't really rooted yet, and so I'm gonna submerge those and they'll be adapted to growing in ponds. So that is wonderful. Again, same pot. We're gonna add some pond to the bottom. Oh my God, here we are. So beautiful. I'm obsessed. Okay, now let's do the Anthurium crystallinum crossed with Magnificum. I know I have one already. And I know that like, you know, this hybrid is relatively common. Oh my God, I need to be careful. I'm like gonna cut the leaf. But now there's just so many hybrids out there. Oh my God. I'm like, I feel bad that I'm gonna disturb this. Fantastic mix guys and fantastic roots. <gasps> just a side note, I think this is hilarious. So this bowl over here, it's a dog bowl. Do I have a dog? No, I don't. When I first started growing plants in LECA, you know, it was, very difficult finding saucers that were deep enough to hold the nutrient solution. And so I was like, oh, 
Dog bowls are sturdy, so I just bought a bunch and you know, obviously I don't use them for that anymore. I just use whatever self-watering planter I have. <laughs> this is the thing I hate the most. When bark, when the roots go, grow into the bark and then you're kind of forced to break it. Look at that, look at that. So I'm just gonna wash the roots off over the sink here. So I actually just took off the oldest leaf and we have the mother, I mean the main plant. Tons of adventitious roots that haven't rooted yet in the medium. So once these grow into the pond, they'll be well adapted. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> I know I'm gonna have to transfer this one soon because the root system is bigger. But just for now, guys, I think I mentioned this before, but you don't know how many of these roots are going to survive. So I'd rather have it in a smaller container. A lot of the time when you transfer a plant from soil to leka, soil to pond, the roots that already exist, they're not adapted to that specific medium. And so a lot of the time, the roots that are already there, they die. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> tapping the plant so the pond kind of distributes. So anyways, like I was saying, thankfully there's a lot of good adventitious roots that I've submerged in the pond. So yay. Okay, the last one, I'm so worried. Anthurium crystallina magnificum crossed with forgetii crossed with luxuriums. And she's like the cutest little thing. I don't think I've ever dealt with an anthurium this small before. And like, I see like healthy roots. Oh, I just pulled it out. That was so easy. I see that, but I'm scared. Oh my God, I don't even know. This is probably not recommended, but that's a healthy root. Okay, there's two. Is this recommended? I'm freaking out about this one. Okay, I might just, okay, yeah. We're gonna put her, I'm gonna put her in pawn, y'all. Man, I don't like this. I think this was a mistake. This was a mistake. Like how, how are you gonna do? You know what this feels like, guys? This really feels like, you know, the first times growing plants in LECA and then me transferring them into Lika for the first time just because it's totally new. Please live. I might put another pot on top. Just, oh my God, I'm so worried. Like I might put her under a grow light and just go like that. Or maybe something more clear so I could, maybe like that. Do we agree? I think we agree. I think I'm just gonna put them all in this dog bowl and then pour over some nutrient solution and then just put it like at a place where I check frequently. When you have a big collection and you put a plant somewhere that you can't see, it becomes tricky because you forget about it in a way. Okay, there's just a thin layer of nutrient solution just for now. Do I put the cup over you? I don't know. Ah! Oh my god, I just almost broke the leaf. These babies, man, causing me so much anxiety. Uh, I'm gonna put her under a grow light. <laughs> okay, guys, don't laugh, please, at this Syngonium Wendlandii. <laughs> oh my god, the leaves are just dropping. Okay, I have actually not looked at her in weeks. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh my gosh, I thought, okay, well, look at the front, guys. The front, the top, not the front. So there are some Wendlandii that are like, alive and i mean you can see there's a root there oh my god it's not focusing on the other one but you can see that one <laughs> there's a few more it's it's hard to show but in that window like look at that insane okay so i'm just gonna take some of the leaves off you know potentially these um crispy leaves could have been mother leaves some of these might be dead propagations oh my god there's one that's like totally dead and i want to show you guys but like it's not coming out so i i feel like it's rooted but i don't know i think that's a little strange because it's like dead <laughs> yeah do you know what a lot of these are just m old mother leaves Okay, so she doesn't look that bad, guys. Um, again, y'all saw the roots. So I find syngoniums are very thirsty. So let's just put some water. I'm putting the tap water just to the full mark, just cause I know, honestly, very thirsty <laughs> syngoniums. We'll just pop her where she was before. She was under grow light, not too close. These can tolerate lower light conditions, but they actually thrive in high light as well. And so, yeah just because she's, I guess she's kind of rehabbing. Um, I'm just gonna put her under the grow light. 
Okay, so if you remember from that Syngonium propagation video, I did the Syngonium Wenlandii, the Syngonium T24, and the Syngonium Mojito. Y'all saw the Wenlandii, the T24 I actually got rid of, but here's a picture of, you know, the roots. She did a root just fine. Now I have, there's a lot of vermiculite because this one, along with the T24, had a lot of spider mites. So she's pretty much intact. There's like maybe a couple or three crispy leaves, which is fantastic because y'all saw how many mojitos I put in that pot. So just a layer of pawn here and then I don't even know guys, there's so many cuttings. Look at all these cuttings. Now, knowing that, you know, the stems are really high up, I'm going to put the water or the nutrients really high. Like you really want to hit it right below where the stems are, just because one of the big reasons why propagations don't succeed is because I love how one just fell out. <laughs> A reason why they don't succeed is if they fall out, but if they dry out. Okay, we got a few roots, guys. Same as the Wenlandii. They really grow so well some vermiculite on my ear i don't like it can we not have this happen please so i'm like tugging and assessing and like overall we're good i don't think i've ever had issues with the mojito again it's my favorite it still is my favorite syngonium i'm just gonna bunch her like this and i'm just gonna put some regular water and again just to the full mark but i'm impressed okay guys <laughs> remember the plant tour video where i said i was gonna experiment with putting a paphiopedilum in pawn something happened where <laughs> i forgot about her she dried out quite a bit. The... Oh, sorry, I'm just so shocked at how dry it is. The old growth is starting to die. And I mean, this could be normal. It will die eventually when it has um, a new growth. So I just thought, like, why don't we take a look? And hopefully it's not too terrible. And I was kind of using this one as a test one because I do... I don't like the look of this. This is so bad. It's so bad. Okay, look at these. They just come right off. They're so dry. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just twisting them and they're just breaking. <laughs> so let's get rid of all the roots. Okay, here's the thing that's promising. So the new plant, which is this one, look right here. Those are two new roots. Guess if I put in pawn and just like monitor it, I think those roots will be adapted to the pawn and I just gotta keep it wet. Okay, this leaf is gone. She's actually half broken off. So I'm just gonna take her off now. And oh my God, I'd even say which one this is. This is the Paphiopedilum Balatulum. So I know she looks really sad. If y'all remember, she was the one that had the speckly flower. And I was obsessed. Okay, I'm gonna grab my nutrient solution. Yeah, I'm trying not to submerge the leaves too much just because I know that they'll rot. But oh my god, hopefully she bounces back. That's a good sign that there was, you know, some new roots there. But we will see, guys. Okay. Let's go through this perlite prop box. So again, the three McDowell stumps and there's two majestic wet sticks that I popped in here. I don't see that much progress. Okay, with the majestic sticks. So let's just grab this one. I don't see anything. Oh, actually. Oh, so that node over there, look at that. And on the flip side, I know this root, it might've been there already. But that's good. Okay, we'll keep you in there then. Okay, the second one, it's funny because the second one's the older one. And I'll, oh, it's doing the same thing. No new roots, but I see this a lot where a wet stick won't push out new roots from the existing ad adventitious roots if they're just dried up. From this new growth point, there'll be a new root growing. Oh, that's wonderful. I'd even, that's actually really good, guys. I thought nothing was happening. I don't know, y'all. How are we doing? It's still the same. No new roots. This leaf has kind of been like this for a while. Okay, second one in the middle. And you're the same as well. No new roots. And a third one. Ooh, okay, this one is the best one, but I'm gonna try to be careful. So she had this little leaf before. There is a new growth, which is definitely new. Oh my God, I'm gonna focus. 
definitely new. Um, and then also, look at that root. Oh my God, so exciting. You know, it takes a lot of energy to push out new growth. And obviously these don't have any roots. I mean, some of them have the beginnings of some roots. Do I need, I'll just put a little bit of nutrient solution. Okay, we'll pop her back under the grow light. Okay, here are the remaining McDowell. So we have four here, a lot of great progress. The only issue is that I, again, have dried them out too much. We're at a stage, I feel, that I can move them away from the grow light because you'll start seeing some yellowing. And based on my experience with the McDowell, if you give them too strong of a light, they really yellow. Anyhow, so I'm probably gonna find a new home. I just need to rearrange my room. But yeah, lots of good progress. So this one over here, look at this cute root coming out over there are you kidding this big one over here actually has a new leaf coming uh two small ones let's see i'm actually surprised that these aren't like super super dry because you know the, ugh, i don't even remember the last time i filled the reservoir it's probably because they don't have a large root system yet so let's just add some nutrient solution <laughs> they're so cute i can't get over how cute these leaves are these will get massive again the plant that these stumps are from like here's a picture are you kidding like it is insane um obviously i'm not going to keep all of them i'm going to see which one grows the best you know right now this one seems like it's the front runner but yeah we'll see guys okay i just noticed this with my anthurium mudanum i think there was a video where i checked the root Oh my god, is there another one? This is crazy. Okay. The caterpillar was really squeezing on the new leaf. And I didn't realize because it was doing a really good job disguising it. But do you see? And so I had to cut just to free it. I think I need to run water over it. And now I'm seeing the other plant too. Because there's two in here. Again, this is the... <laughs> what's left of her and it's good because remember when i took it out of the pot it was really unsteady i'm like tugging and it seems like she grew a substantial root system since that time let me just cut this off and i'm just running water over caterpillar the first leaf that comes out when you propagate any plant is gonna be a bit wonky since these are the first leaves it makes sense but it's just annoying that you got stuck like and you're still stuck like why i'm just gonna break the caterpill or whatever this is i don't even know if it's a caterpill bend away bend away yeah why are there so many seriously there are one two three i see three why were there three sheaths of like anyhow oh, she's free something going on with the second one though i don't want the same thing to happen so okay so the decision i'm making guys with the second one you can definitely see over here there is a new leaf coming and i don't know if you could see but it's very early on in the leaf development so i don't want to touch her and the one that i freed i, I am so excited to have mood in them leaves again okay are we ready to look at miss forgetty eye hi she's still not hard it off maybe velvet and theriums take a while i might have to move her away from this west facing window i think she's getting too much light you are like so wonderful I'm in love with this forgetty eye. I can't wait for it to get so big. <laughs> Second one is also pushing out a new leaf. And I think she's drier. Are you drier? Okay, this one got stuck. And I was like mad. I was like, why are these getting stuck, man? Oh, there's a flower. It's all right. <laughs> Usually I'm not excited about anthurium flowers, but like this is gonna sound shady. I'd rather it this one than this one. I think out of the two, cause they are quite different. I think out of the two, I just, love this one so much i was looking i was like why are the leaves suffering and it makes sense now when you have a new leaf coming out at the same time you have do you see it future can zoom in right over there look at that flower developing but when you have like the two happening at once the plant will suffer <laughs> oh my god i didn't see the flower before this i saw the new leaf coming out but i was like oh so let's do the nutrient solution Okay, and this might be a mistake. I have four of my Paphiopetalums. I'm thinking of putting them all in pawn. I just like don't like that they're in an aerate mix and they might die because I could already tell that they are, v 
They're so underwatered. <laughs> Here they are. Actually, do you know what? First, I'm just gonna wash them down a little bit and then I'm going to spray an insecticide just to be safe because these have been kind of away from my collection. They're in that same aeroid mix that I was saying, you know, I was a bit suspicious that maybe the spider mites came from the substrate. Spray them down with Endol. It says that it does kill all stages of spider mites, including the eggs. I know... Oh, what's the ingredient? Pyrethrins? <laughs> I know a lot of the time spider mites could become resistant to it, so I don't necessarily like using it. So I'm just spraying these. You really need to saturate the whole plant because the spray kills them on contact. So on the bottle, it does say to repeat 10 to 14 days after if necessary. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to see what the damage is here. Ooh, that's not good. Healthy path fruits should be a light brown color. Based on like feeling them, there are two really healthy ones. Here's a questionable one that I'm going to keep. I'm grabbing one of these self-watering pots. We're gonna put some pond. Again, I am no expert. I am so new to pathopetalums. I'm kind of just doing this because of my curiosity. And oh my gosh, I'm really excited for this one. This one has beautiful yellow flowers. Number two here. <laughs> I'm like so worried. This is the one that was just unbelievably beautiful. I actually bought her having a flower and I just couldn't believe the amount of beauty. <laughs> Looks like we have a few roots. Let me just wash them off. Oh, so look at these roots. Um, they look pretty good. I'm actually surprised at how good they look. And so Paphiopelums, the bloom at one point for the most part, this part will eventually die that had the existing spike. The new plant will grow just an offshoot of that plant. And so you can see, look at this. There's already a new root forming. So this one is actually pretty good. Grabbing some palm. I still don't know if I would recommend these plants. Um, I do find them a lot more difficult or I don't want to say difficult. I just mean that you need a lot of patience when it comes to this. So, and like, for example, if you don't have the amount of patience for a Phalaenopsis orchid, then definitely don't get Paphiopetalums. They tend to be slower on average. The only good thing about these is that they don't necessarily need a lot of light and they can tolerate like intermediate to cool temperatures. Okay, the next one is a Paphiopetalum Wasner Vietnam. The roots are pretty dehydrated. Ooh, I don't know if this is good, guys. <laughs> okay, the color's good, but they're very squishy. I don't even know, like, I don't feel confident with any of these roots. Okay, we're just gonna go with it. Hopefully, there'll be a new root that comes out of here, but we'll just see. And like, I mean, I don't know if these are gonna survive to be quite honest, but I'm gonna be optimistic. <laughs> I don't think I like this one. Okay. This one is the same as the Dillinatii that I already repotted, but this one is the more intense color. Oh, this one's probably the worst. Are you the worst? Okay, I can't tell. Oh my, one of the roots is like just completely off. Okay, let's talk for a little bit. <gasps> so these roots all rotten. Look at this. Oh, yeah. And yeah, it's really sad. You know, I don't know if these roots just over here, I don't know if they're okay, but the good news, this root here is definitely okay. And then there is a new point where it could potentially root. I'm just gonna add some nutrient solution. And this might be a mistake too. Do you know what we're doing it? I think I mentioned this before, but Paphiopelum roots, they're not like Phalaenopsis roots where they're okay if they're exposed to air. At that point, they'll usually dry up. So that's why a lot of people don't grow their paths in LECA. I was thinking because pond has smaller air pockets. And I mean, if I keep on top of it, they'll stay relatively wet. Um, I think they'll be okay. I know one person commented and said that they do well in, in pond. So I'm hoping that they do okay. 
it's a new day. It's probably three days later. And I really need to water <laughs> these anthuriums. They're getting so thirsty. Like it's December. The reservoirs just keep drying out so much. So we're gonna take a look at all the anthuriums basically. Okay, so we'll start off with the king. Okay, this is gonna be a little bit of drama because <laughs> she's up there. I'm gonna have to, why is my ring light here? Okay, let's get rid of you. guys you're so pretty though when did this get so pretty oh my god why weren't you in my favorites video you look so good wow okay anthurium vicia guys oh are you kidding like this is incredible i have to water this one like every two to three days oh it's so dry oh i'm so behind guys also is this leaf because this was the previous one is it bigger or the same size i can't even tell I'm so excited. Once this hardens off and once I get more pond because I'm out currently, I'm gonna repot her into a bigger planter. It's gonna be so exciting. So I'll water her in a bit, but I have my um, Esmeralda dance up there. Ooh, I'm scared because it looks like this leaf is stuck and like, I know it's gonna be damaged. Like why? These leaves don't look great, but there's reason. So this is the newest leaf. I just love would you say this is ribbing? This is the older one. They're starting to yellow on the edges. Obviously, this is the oldest leaf, so that's normal. <sighs> There's a new leaf, and she's bending. I know she's going to be damaged, guys. There's a new leaf right over here popping out. And on top of that, there's a flower. If you check heaven, zoom in. There's a flower coming. I showed you my forgetty eye, so... It's basically the same thing happening. A leaf and a flower, that's way too much energy. So actually, I'm gonna take this to the sink just because I wanna run the water over the leaf. And because I'm running water over the leaf, I have to take the stop, I have to take the stopper off. So let's do that now. It's really, I, I forgot to mention, it's really rainy and windy also. Yeah, it's like, crazy rainy but also i mean the tree looks great just glowing in the back i love this and the village looks so cute okay we'll just put her in oh actually let's take the red stopper out first obviously do this over sink because you don't know if there's any <laughs> fluid see and this is i get it I'm like the stopper needs to be in there but wow i can't even get it out so i'll just put that off to the side we'll put her in the sink and I'll just run over the leaf and the flower, why not? So you'll see, she's just draining out this small hole, so it does take a little bit of time. Oh my god, I didn't realize how leggy this anthurium is, but oh, <laughs> this leaf bed, okay. I gotta be careful though, oh my gosh. Okay, I'm just filling the reservoir. We're just about halfway there. Okay, it's it's still not ready to bring back the Esmeralda in, so why don't we head back in here and we'll look at the other ones. Forgot I have to move a few things first. <laughs> oh my God, guys. Oh, you have holes now. Okay, let's start off with Crystallina Magnificum. Oh my God. I can't. If y'all missed the favorites video, there's two inflows here. One is open, but it hasn't like done anything. And so, because she's super dry and because, you know, she's doing a lot, I'm gonna use some nutrient solution. After seeing this new leaf come, like I feel like it'd be so wonderful, for example, to cross this with Luxurians. Like, are you kidding? And okay, this pot over here is my Magnificum Regal. She's looking a bit rough. I have a feeling it's because she's working on so many things. There's a new growth point right there. There's a new growth point right there. This just came out. I don't know if this is an inflow. The energy is just being divided and it's pulling from here. And so I might do the nutrient solution also. Again, you can't even see the indicator, super dry. Future Kevin zoom in just halfway up. And the last one on this cart is this gigantic metallicum, guys. She's not, she's getting there, but she's not hardened off yet. So the pot is here, but you can see that she's stretching that way. So there's three leaves, one, two, and three. Then the new leaf is going the other way. So guys, I'm just gonna go under all these leaves here. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm just gonna pour. I don't know if y'all can see the meter, but she's there. 
It looks like we're staying at the halfway point. So the bar cart is done and just sneaking back under these leaves. So moving on to this small square table over here, we have four anthuriums. The dust of pins, guys, is pushing out a new leaf. It looks so good, love the color. The forcatum is starting to harden off. Look at this beauty. Oh, oh my God. Okay, wonderful. The queen has hardened off. Oh my gosh, she is so wide. Look, look at my hand. I know she's damaged, but like, look how big. She's doing good. And then the, the Waterbury Adams, just, just here, you know, hanging out. Um, I'm kind of running out of nutrient solution, so I'm gonna prioritize and use it on my decipens. I'm just adding additional water just to reach the halfway point. Yeah, I don't know guys, these anthuriums are getting really big and like, I love it. I just, I need to do some rearranging in this room. It's just funny cause a lot of these anthuriums had big leaves and I cut like half of them off and they're still taking over. Like, I don't even know. The leaves keep pulling on each other. <laughs> they're always fighting. Okay. The guy overdid it with the queen. We might have to drain her in the sink. Again, this Wachaburianum that I'm watering right now, it is one of my goals to make this grow well. I have been on top of the watering. Okay, let's first grab the Esmeralda dense, put her back, and then we'll grab the queen, let her drain in the sink, because I definitely <laughs> overdid it. So it's been sitting here for a little bit. Oh my God, I hate trying to disturb this. I know a lot of people say leave it, I don't necessarily agree with it. You gotta help it sometimes. Okay, I'm not pulling the leaf. I'm pulling the caterpillar, guys. Pushing the leaf the other way. Oh, okay, are you okay? I think you're okay. Oh my gosh. I am so excited for this. And I don't know about the flower. Should I keep it? I know the last time I cut it. It might be interesting to see like what this anthurium could easily cross with. Oh my God. Look how big. Yeah, insane. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, let's drain the water. <laughs> wow. You can even tell how heavy it is. Oh my gosh. Okay. And we're going. Okay, guys, I have a question. Once my anthuriums grow bigger, I always gravitate to, I'm pretty sure this is an eight inch or eight and a half inch pot. Stop her at the bottom and then you just pop this at the bottom, put the meter in. I don't know, guys. I feel like I want to find another one with a bit more space in here. The only reason why I still stick with these when I'm sizing up plants in pond is because they're cheap and they do the job. Any other self-watering apparatus that's this size or bigger, and I know, guys, La Chusa has a whole section, but do you see how much they are? <laughs> So pricey. So yeah, if y'all have any suggestions about other options that are cheap and better than this, because remember I said like sometimes a meter gets stuck and because it's a closed system, you can't like fix it or something gets jammed at the bottom. Like there's some anthuriums where I kind of have to gauge on like how light the anthurium is, <laughs> like the whole thing in my, in my arms and uh, boom. Okay, let's do, <laughs> I really neglected these moss poles guys. <laughs> I know I've been showing them a lot, but like, wow, they are so dry. This new leaf is like not fully open, but there is a new one right over there. Okay, I'll just let her sit to the side here. And of course, Miss Branty Adam over here. Okay, new goal. I need to keep on top of wetting this moss pole. You know, I think because I'm like filming every day and editing every day, I don't realize how much time has gone by, but I'm a little upset because I see two vines where the leaves got stuck on the brantiatum. So I just want to show you. Okay, let's start off with the good first. So thankfully these leaves are not damaged. It's the ones on this side. Look at that. She's all scrunched and everything. And then look, this happens all the time if you don't have proper humidity, specifically for the brantatum. So I might just cut those leaves. I'm gonna see if I can free them first. Oh, you were doing so well. Okay, that one's free already. We'll see what, what it looks like in the future, but oh, the one that has the hole is 
out, but like, okay, do you know what? I'm gonna keep her for now. Hopefully it'll be okay. I'm in this weird, you know, in between where I'm out of sphagnum moss. I'm close to out of pond. I'm out of Lekka. I'm hoping they come this week. I know I need it. We're okay for now, but like we need it soon. <laughs> okay, so now I'm doing some like pest surveillance, I guess. These two Hoyas, I mean, I looked at more, but for these two Hoyas, this is my, oh gosh, what's your name? You have the beautiful, she's a hybrid. She has very beautiful flowers. I'll put the picture here and the name because I'm forgetting. I'm always convinced this Hoya has some sort of flat mite situation. So I'm starting to think, I don't know if it's fungal because I don't know if y'all can see that leaf right over there. And for some reason, the video is not working on my microscope microscope so i've just been kind of looking at it as i look at the leaf here and here's the thing guys i probably look at this plant once a month through a microscope because i always see that these leaves are so questionable and i never see flat mites obviously i'm thankful like don't get me wrong i guess another thing like i don't see any eggs i don't see any yeah guys there's nothing there yeah i guess i don't know it just looks weird i've been literally sitting here for like half an hour just looking at some hoyas the other one that was next to it, the carry eye over here. I mean, girl, she's fine, but I was like, that looks questionable. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking, guys. Yeah, and I'm even looking at like the part where there's new growth. What I'm doing, I'm just like, holding it and hoping like I'll see something move because a lot of the time it can be missed. None. I even checked this bottom one because like you can see there is a nubby thing. There is a new leaf coming beside it, but I look there also. So very thankful. I might just end up, I don't know. It looks good from the front. Like that looks fine-ish. <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. Anyhow, just the amount of Hoyas I have, I'm actually shocked that I haven't found them yet. But they're tricky, so I'm gonna keep monitoring, but... Okay guys, I guess that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I had more plant chores, but I feel like this video is getting a little long. So I just want to save it for the next plant chore video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you've made it to the very end, thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>